You're welcome back. It's time now to go to the press and see what the headlines are. And we're being joined by Mr. Tunde Kolawole, legal practitioner, who will be talking to us from Lagos here. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Kolawole. Good morning, my brother. Hope you had a great night. Yes, I did. I did. Thanks to God. Well, thank God for that. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we're going to try to cover headlines from uh, about four newspapers, and that is The Punch, The Guardian, The Nation, and Nature News, as much as we can. And then those that repeat themselves, uh, we're going to skip. Now, we'll begin with Punch newspaper. Punch newspaper is leading with a story about um, labor. 35,000 Naira wage award. Labor gives govern governors ultimatum 61 million Nigerians to get 1 trillion naira. The writers on that story are an ultimatum given by NLC TUC applicable to states, Kanu, Gombe, NLC chapters, others. And then 15 million households to get 25,000 naira monthly program will reduce poverty, says World Bank. Let's hear your comment on that, please. What? Well, I sympathize with the people. There's no one who goes into the market now who is living in Nigeria. Who will let us know that we are now faced with a hyperinflation? Prices of goods and services have hit the And if you are a salary earner and you don't have any other means of income, how do you cope with this spirally inflation in all spaces of our life? Of course, we want to ask for increase in wages and emolument. The sad aspect of this is that uh, the country is no longer earning as much money as to be able to meet the demands of labor. The question now will be, where will government find the resources to be able to meet the ultimatum of the labor um, sector? Is government going to continue to borrow money to pay wages and allowances? Or is government going to embark on printing of money? Like uh, it was done under Muhammad Uwai to be able to run the country. You and I will agree that all these two authorities that I have mentioned wouldn't be the best way to go if you don't want to devalue and if you don't want to destroy the Naira. If you don't want the Naira to become like the Zimbabwe dollar. Which when you want to buy an onion or you want to buy magi, you have to go to the market with millions of Zimbabwe dollars before you can buy any of those things. So, I would have prefer a situation in which the government and then the labor movement will really sit down and work out an economic blueprint that would. Uh, uh, safeguard this economy from eating the rocks, from plunging to disaster, and ultimate ruination of our people. Paying more wages, a borrowed money, a printed money, is the path to disaster. It's not a road we should traverse at all. Mm. Okay. Um, I don't. I don't know. Um, labor. Labor is asking for. Uh, the government is talking about giving twenty-five thousand uh, naira to households, which means maybe uh, a, an average of four people per household. We are going to get like sixty million people out of two hundred million people uh, being uh, captured uh, to uh, benefit from uh, that uh, program. I don't know. Uh, protesters storm well, national. Well, okay, respond before even, I go. Even that in itself is a path that we have chosen in the past. You recollect under the present, under the last ACC regime of President Mohamed Buhari, mm. there were all manners of the poverty elevation program, treasure money, all manners of things and all that. With insight now, the tracking of that program. In what way has this uh, elevated property in this country? What has simply happened with those programs was that as soon as those monies are handed over to the traders and all the empower and so called people benefited from it, they simply go to the next uh, book, the next restaurant, 
to order for a meal, at least three for the day, and if the money remains, they go back to the market and find me this diarrhea and yam and the pepper to be able to feed their family for a few days. It didn't translate into any improvement in the economies or in the welfare or in the poverty of the people benefited from those who focus. I am yet to see in any country where money has just sold out and then it's automatically transformed or translates into poverty alleviation. The place where poverty has been alleviated and which there were positive results was the Brazil under President Lula. And what did he do? He went into the slum areas, picked up children who were going to school, began to give them education. He embarked on massive, massive housing projects in the slums of the Brazil and made those properties or housing available to the ordinary man on the street at very, very cheap. Uh, uh, the purchase. And of course, too, he also invested a lot of money on the health sector, such that the ordinary man had uh, very access and very cheap uh, access to the health sector. If we embark on such path, we will be better off. Rather than handing over money to people to simply go to the next market by the Alien Common to be able to at least eat a, a, a meal a day and then maybe for one or two weeks and then they revert back to their poverty. We have tried this in the past also during the Udoji uh, period when Nigeria had a lot of money in which we are, uh, uh, I mean, in which people have earned salaries and wages were automatically increased. It didn't translate into any investment. What the civil servants have done during the time and continue as in the for start buying cars, buying television sets, and wearing expensive jewelry. So, honestly speaking, I think, I, I mean, I think we need that both government and labor require to sit down. And also the leaders of thought in this country on the pathways to go. The economy, when you look at what is important in the paper today, with regard to the value of the Naira, is about the risk thereof. And I would want to say, <coughs> without its implication, that this problem, as beyond national development in Ubu, is beyond the APC. We require to call on all men of thought people of think tank in the university and the private sector to give us the blueprint on the way out of this. And of course, too, it will require to streamline this uh, uh, politics in terms of the resources that are being wasted, dissipated on politics. Too many people in the Senate, too many people in the House of Reps, too much expenditures have been published on political office order. We will have to review all these programs. But I will trim down the cost of governance so as to free resources for the elevation of poverty in Nigeria, for the money of the society. Let's also revert back to something. You will recollect that during the past and era, there was a policy of government that very good analysis will no longer be given to politicians and civil servants. And that in fact those houses are going to be sold. And they in fact did sell some of those houses. But tragically what has happened? We are back to square one. Their food are again now being given to politicians and civil servants. And of course too, houses are being rented to them. The same person who bought the government are only owned by the, I mean, by, the, by, the, by the government and by the state are also the ones that we are renting properties, empty houses for now. To be able to live comfortably because they are politicians, because they are top uh, civil servants. So, this is Nigeria. Very pathetic, pathetic to them.
Mm. Okay, uh, we have um, maybe following what Falano, Femi Falano said a few days ago about the fact that it's, it's not good or it's not even constitutional for um, sensitive positions to come from one geopolitical zone. We've seen a, a headline here, protesters storm National Assembly oppose EFCC chair's confirmation. Yeah. You saw the this? EFCC yes. Page. Yes. The confirmation yeah, of the I chairman. Have read, uh, I've read some of those things. As is the only the case. Even we lawyers are not, uh, have not agreed on whether the man that uh, President Inugu has put forward is qualified to step into the shoes of the EFCC channel or not. Whereas Mr. Femi Falana has said, by its antecedent, having acted as chairman of EFCC, having been the secretary of the board of EFCC, given about 18 years that he has spent in there, he is qualified to step in. And as if he is going to be disqualified, it will never be on the basis of the central character structure. Mm. It's been said that the money like this is from the southern part of Nigeria. And I asked somebody from the south of Nigeria to also be the EFCC chairman will be in violation of the federal character uh, principle. So these are issues. What I'm aware of is that uh, as I said, anybody below the post, I think, of the deputy or is it a staff commission of police? Ordinarily, they should not be a CC chairman. And what we have also been having in the past is people, I mean professionals, who have worked in the security, in the police especially, and some of these other security agencies, that have always been considered as chairman of the FCC. And then for the ICCC, technocrats and civil servants are always put in there. Why are we no longer following that precedent? I'm not too sure that the man who is being put forward now has all experience in the security, in any of the security agencies. He worked as a parasecurity staff as secretary of the board and maybe as active chairman. That might not be sufficient uh, for him to hold that uh, post. Because he must also know that the ESCC operates they investigate cases, they carry weapons, and they are also susceptible uh, to what the criminals in the society usually do to some I mean to security operatives. So with that figure, one would prefer that the man who has extensive experience in court security, like the police, like even the um, army, um, GSS and what have you, who probably have been more suitable for that uh, post. So, we wouldn't know why the man is being put forward to replace uh, Mr. Bauer. Mm -hmm. But again, if you look at uh, Mr. Bauer's incident, it's not so different. Or it's not dramatically different from this uh, record that we have just been recommended. Uh, Bauer was also, I think he has been working in the FCC uh, over a long time. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm not too sure it came from the police as such, or from any, I mean, or from the theater, or even from the Nigerian army. Well, the truth of the matter is that uh, if the law establishing the EFCC uh, didn't say that uh, they couldn't hold the post. We should just consider our energy on its capacity to really be able to deliver on all the responsibilities, on all the duties, and all that is required for the very challenging office of the EFCC chairman. We collect. Most people have held those offices, I mean, that office. I've always ended up in disgrace 
It's not even an offering. That any people should, uh, that anybody should be crazy about uh, getting one as women. It's, um, it's an offering that is uh, paid with a banana peel upon which anybody can sleep, fall, and end up in the street anytime. Okay. So, um, well, let's move to the Guardian newspaper. Very interesting headline there. The Guardian leads with, um, INEX credibility sinks as 94% contested post await tribunal. Okay, uh, putting it into perspective, we have 1,280 positions that were contested for, and out of these, 1,209 are in court, being contested in the court. So, um, this is where we are right now. INEX credibility is sinking. Uh, we have been promised that November 11, everything will be transmitted. Uh, first of all, it, was, it will be transmitted electronically. And then the chairman came again and said it will be uh, transmitted according to the provisions of the law. <laughs> so, uh, so it gives him room to say, okay, the law said this as well. The law said that as well, not specifically that it has to be electronical. But this is where we are, INEX credibility sinking as 94%. It's, it's incredible. So what are your comments, please? Honestly, my brothers, I think we should commend the Guardian newspaper for this beautiful report. Mm. In fact, I haven't seen any report as graphic as this in any Nigerian newspaper in the recent time. The Guardian has been able to put the whole uh, tragedy <laughs> that is in a very graphic, a very informative manner for any discarding person to say. What? A duty to add to what the Guardian has done. Other than to just say that uh, when this man was appointed the present chairman of uh, of INS, I remember a time that he succeeded was asked a question whether he thinks that the man there now can live up to the to the to expectation and responsibilities of the office of the chairman of INS. And the guy replied that he thinks he can do it. If the guy was to be a similar question today, I am sure he will have a different opinion. The truth of the matter is that uh, I let under the present chairman have failed and did a very well place. If the NDC that the guardian has put forward, that the guardian has published today, is anything to go by. We now see a situation in which even professors in the university that we thought we could rely on for their integrity and credibility are now being mad and being smeared and now being alleged to be compromising the integrity of our election. So where do we go from here? Are we going to start importing people from EU, from America, from Canada? from India to come and start running elections for us. This is a tragic. Furthermore, we are now leaving the court to decide, to come in, to determine who has won the election and who has not won. And by the time we do this, what are we simply doing? We are politicizing the court. And if you look at what uh, Senator Bukachwa was uh, reported to have said, then the issues become more worrisome. As out of elections that were conducted, <laughs> the court will decide 94.4% of who won that election. And we know our politicians, they will do just anything to get the valuable uh, uh, rulings and judgments in our court. And when they start shopping for several good and all that, they might want to really compromise the integrity of the court. Mm. Uh, if we are going to ensure that we get credible elections, come 
the next election, we should be looking at uh, finding somebody else to ISNX at the national level and also at the state level. Remember what my Jimmy, a lawyer, he did a very beautiful job when he was uh, SNINX in some of those uh, states. And I think the man who also retired recently uh, as uh, in charge of an INEC publicity commissioner and all that, who is also a lawyer. I think his name is Okoye, but what is that his name? I can't remember. That's just Okoye. He also discussed the responsibility of the public. So there are still men of integrity in this country. We require to shop for them to help some of these critical areas of the society. INEC. NNPC, and of course, CHAM, and then the uh, federal and the new uh, services, the Nigerian ports, the airports, and all those that are integrating agencies. If we are able to plug all the loopholes in some of those that are in agencies, this country will not need to start borrowing money to really uh, manage our own society. We will not need to start borrowing money too if we are able to trim down on the cost of governance. Reduce the National Assembly, make some of the state legislators a part time affair, or a situation in which they will really get citizen allowances, stop giving a private gifts to senators and House of Representatives. Let them also use their own salaries and allowances to buy their own vehicles. After all, some countries of the world, we have seen President of Five Ministers riding bicycles to their offices. There is no reason why our leader, particularly in view of the economic downturn of the country, should not begin to show such examples as well. Mm. Okay, um, let's move to another another um, uh, topic, another. Headline, rather, on on the on the front page, uh, we have this headline uh, still on the Guardian newspaper, which says um, uproar as in the Senate as Akpabio Ndume face off gets messier. I, I don't know if you have insight to that story and what you feel about yeah. uh, the kind of uh, problems going on there. Well, we can. On the face of it, because our politicians are very peculiar people, you have to can read uh, what is behind their mind, looking at the countenances uh, on their faces. But what is important in the paper was that Indima uh, wanted to speak on the floor of the Senate. And was shot to the point of order. And then the Senate president asked for the other paper of the Senate and looked at the order that the Jumia has uh, erased, and he said it was in a profit. And so he was said to have overruled the Jumia from contributing to the debate on the floor of the house. And I think Jumia was said to have been pissed off, and then walked out of the National Assembly. And immediately he walked out of the Senate, the Senate President convoked, uh, shut the door, and then the Senate went to, I think, an executive election or the other part. Well, from some other things we have read in the paper, some people are not happy with the distribution of the chairmanship of the Senate committee. And if you also look at the what the Senator Abu, what do you call from uh, Tamawa State? Abu. Whose uh, election has been forced mm. by the Court of Appeal. Yeah. He has alleged. Now, some of them have been penciled down, so they will be removed from the Senate. That he is one of them, Senator Abose is one of them, and the old Jews of Kalu, mm. and some other four senators who uh, follow suit. Now, the reason they are being punished is that uh, they didn't support the election of Apadio as the Senate president. And they didn't support it simply because. They felt that uh, once 
the president is from the other part of Nigeria. The Senate president should also go to some other zones of the country. Not that they don't like a party or that they have any issues with him, but they are not thinking about the national spread, special character. And it is because of this that they have been punished. Well, I hope uh, this is really not the issue between uh, the federal president and the federal But we should also not forget that the senator in Duma is a um, head who will describe as, I'm sorry to say, to use the word, he uh, could sometimes behave like a loose color. He uh, uh, could sometimes uh, be very loose color. In fact, you have to pin him down to any uh, specific uh, commitment or ideology who will. He blows forth and cold, depending on uh, is a personal interest and all that. And my view is that uh, once you have become a senator, the whole Nigeria becomes your constituency. Mm. And your vital interest to be subordinated to the interest of the Nigerian people. When you do not do this, there is never going to be peace in the Senate. And you might not be able to decide the responsibility of that office, which is to make law represent your constituency and do oversight functions. In the last six months or there about, that the Senate has convoked, in what way have they done any of these three things that I'm talking about? The other one we can see is these people ministering to their own personal welfare, accommodation, holiday or vacation allowances, Fragile gifts to community alliance, and of course, don't get in around the world to attend one to follow the uh, uh, seminars, workshops, and, uh, and the gatherings or the other, which is not adding any value to their core responsibility. It shows, like we have seen in the past, Nigeria should pay attention, not just to the development of government but also to the legislature, and even the judicial, these three arms of government are very crucial to the survival of democracy, the rule of law, and the overall well-being of the Nigerian people. Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, there are so many other things that we could have talked about, but uh, this is how we're going to wrap it up this morning on this segment. We'd like to thank you so much, Tunde Kolawole, for coming on the program this morning. Thanks for having me. Mm. Okay, Tunde Kolawole. I pray you have a lovely day. You too, you too. Same here. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Well, Tunde Kolawole is a legal pro practitioner here in Lagos, and he was talking with us on the headlines uh, that made it to the front pages of some of our national dailies. We were not able to take all of them, but uh, we took a, a good chunk of the very, very important ones. We do hope that you're having a wonderful day where you are. We're going to take a short break now, and when we return, we'll be talking with our uh, other guests that will be looking at so many other issues that we need to discuss today. Stay with us. <laughs>